We're at the top of the hour. Let's go ahead and begin. We'll start in mountain pose. Just take your time as you make your way up to the top of your mat. We start in standing. And as we prepare for our practice, let's take a few moments first to get reacquainted with breath. So you might take a few deep breaths, nice full inhale, and a complete exhale. You might even breathe out through your mouth with a sigh. And try again, another full breath in and exhale for the release. There you go, good. And then start to check in with your body. You might even add movement as a way to assess how you're feeling at this moment. Yeah, a little movement of your shoulders, your head, your neck, and just work your way down your body. Meanwhile, just continue with slow, steady breaths. using each breath as a way to fully arrive in the moment, to be present, beginning your journey inward. Very good. and continue to bring more awareness to your breath. We'll do so by inhaling and feeling the breath rising upward. Even imagine you're trying to pull the breath up away from the belly to really expand the lungs. And as you exhale, draw your belly button in toward your spine, a little pulling action in the belly to engage the abdominal lock. It doesn't have to be too strong or forceful, just a light pull from your center. So again, as you inhale, just feel the breath rising, filling up your lungs, even feel the lengthening in your spine growing a bit taller. Exhale, draw belly button in, connecting to your center body. Just very simple ways to be more present, more connected. And starting to tune in to the subtle parts of your body your mind. We'll be focusing on our hips and hamstrings, so some leg work today. So as we prepare our bodies to move, let's start by taking three slow deep breaths, getting an energy surge up into your body. When you're ready, inhale and extend your arms out and up. Just reach into the sky, big stretch. And exhale, fold forward. So a good hinge from your hips, bend your knees as much as you need to, and just guide your way down towards your toes. You don't have to touch your toes. Maybe your hands land at your shins. Inhale, slide your hands up to your knees, maybe your thighs to extend your spine, only rising up halfway. The exhale, either stay here or fold again. It might be a partial fold where you do don't go all the way down, or if it feels okay, slowly melt your way to a full standing forward fold where you feel a heaviness in your own body and gravity drawing you downward. You can feel a release in your shoulders, your neck, even your head. And even add movement here as it feels good. Yeah, maybe circling the shoulders, nodding yes, shaking your head no. Even a little sway or movement of the upper body. There you go. All the while still breathing, noticing the breath, and even how it feels as you're in this forward fold. Again, since we're focusing on hamstrings and hips, just notice this stretch quality down through the backs of your legs, even with knees bent. Let's come back up to standing. You're gonna shift your weight back into your heels. Bend your knees to lower your hips like you're sitting down into a low chair. Lift your upper body until we come to a chair-like position. Maybe extend the arms out to the side or even out in front of you. Actually, reach out in front of you like so. And as you reach forward dynamically, maybe sit back and down just a little deeper so we are getting a little bit more into the legs. Now we'll stand. Inhale, reaching up, even looking up. If it feels okay on your neck, exhale, look forward and bring your arms down to your side. 
That's our half salute to the sun. And we'll just repeat that sequence. Here we go. Inhale, reaching out and up. Good energy in your hands and fingers. Good. Exhale, leading with your heart. Fold forward. Soft knees, guiding your way down under control, partially or all the way. Inhale to slide your hands up to your shins or knees. To extend your spine. Long, flat back. The exhale, either hold here or fold again. Moving right away, shifting weight into the heels, bend your knees, lower your hips. Let's come back to that chair-like posture and extend the arms out front. Reach as your hips sit back. It's just kind of a balancing movement, reaching forward as your hips sit back. And then we'll stand up tall, reach into the air, look up, and exhale, look forward, and arms return down to your side. Very good. And then another check-in with your body. If you want to add some movement, maybe, maybe roll your shoulders. Circle the head and neck gently. And we'll get ready for our full sun salutation. Just continuing to add movement to the body as we're breathing with this movement. Here we go. Inhale, reaching out and up. And exhale, fold forward or swan dive forward. Same hinge in the hips with soft knees. Guide your way down. Inhale, rise up halfway, flat back. This exhale, fold. Bend your knees quite a bit so you can place your hands on the mat out in front of your feet at the top edge of your mat and walk or step the feet back to the back end of your mat. Just lower your hips, but not too low, maybe just to shoulder level so we formed plank pose. Okay, a high push-up position. We'll take a breath in. On the exhale, bend your knees a little and send your hips up into the air. This should take you to downward facing dog. Now because of that transition, you might need to step the feet forward a little bit just so your hips are really lifting up quite high. So you create this nice inverted V shape, what I call a mountain peak. And you can add movement here. Since we're working legs, you might want to pedal the feet here where you press one heel down towards the floor as the other heel lifts and then alternate. And that pressing down sensation might add a lengthening or stretch quality in your calf muscles. Notice what's happening in your toes, the soles of your feet, and your knees will bend. Your hips might even move. And just experience how your, your head and chest kind of sink naturally between the arms. Let's get ready to move, breathing in right where you are. With the exhale, walk, step, or even hop both feet up to the top of the mat. This will bring you back to a forward fold. Inhale, rise up halfway, or monkey pose, nice lengthened spine, exhale, fold again. Weight shift into the heels, bend your knees, inhale, reverse your swan dive, so coming all the way up to standing, reaching high, and now we'll move into chair pose. So the arms can be up at an angle like so, or go back to that parallel form of the arms if you'd like, and breathe in. And exhale, dive out of your seat, back down towards toes, forward, forward, it's going to add on. When you're ready, inhale, rise up halfway or extend the spine, monkey pose. Exhale, fold, bend your knees, hands to the mat, hop or step or walk the feet back, they're all correct, to get your feet to the back end of your mat. You can take that same shortcut to down dog if you'd like, or with your exhale, bend your elbows, squeeze them in towards your ribs for support as you lower your body down, finishing the push-up, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, just to lift the chest, for an up dog or a low cobra, then exhale onto your toes and feeling the hips just float into the air. You just pause here, step into place, adjusting your feet and your hands. We'll add our lunge. Inhale, extend your right leg up behind you, reaching back, good. Exhale, step right foot to the top of the mat, just somewhere behind the right hand or wrist. Turn your left heel to the floor behind you. Be sure to shift your weight back into that foot so you feel well planted into the earth. This should bring lightness to the hands so you can hinge from hips. With an inhale, rise up and we'll face forward. So you're gonna reach up and then lunge low. Let's even change our arm posture. Just bending the elbows here so we can pay attention to what's happening in the lower region. 
making sure our right knee and toes are pointing forward. This back left leg is kind of turning out, getting a little stretch here in the hip flexor. We're going to get more into the hip flexors a bit later. We're going to inhale, re-extend the arms straight up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Bring your hands back down to the floor. We'll slide the right foot back, plank pose. You can finish the sequence any way you'd like. Chaturanga Dandasana. You can certainly modify that by bringing knees to the floor first, then chest. Your back bend can be low like so, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Stepping into place, hips nice and high. Inhale, extend left leg up into the air, strong straight line. Exhale, let's step left foot to the top of the mat. It lands behind the left wrist or wiggle the toes forward to get it there. Right heel to the floor behind you, shifting the weight back, find your center and balance. Light hands so you can hinge from hips, rising up, reaching up. Settle into the pose with a good reach and a nice lunge. And then you can change your arm posture if you'd like. Yes, good. And just checking in, left knee and toes are pointing forward. That back leg is getting an outer spiral or outer rotation. So we get a hip flexor stretch or upper thigh. Inhale here, extend the arms, exhale, hinge and fold, hands to the floor, slide left foot back to meet the other. There's plank pose, completing the series as you'd like. Just meeting in down dog. We'll always meet in down dog, which means you can move through this portion of the sequence in any style, any way that you'd like. Very good. Let's just jump into our next lunge. Here we go, inhale, extend right leg up behind you and exhale, step right foot to the top of the mat first. Back to our warrior one set up, left heel to the floor, same shifting of weight back, finding our center. We're rising up, our exhale, turn torso towards the left side of the room so your arms can come down to parallel and this should bring us to warrior two. Yes, you might need to adjust your feet underneath you for good balance. Right knee and toes are pointing forward again. Same similar style of that back leg, a little bit opening, but you're going to get an opening in the hips. Side angle, reaching out over the right knee to angle the upper half of the body. We'll rotate the arms. You've got it. Reaching high, reaching low. Nice opening. Beautiful. Now, you don't have to touch the floor unless you're able to touch the floor. If it feels better for your body, rise up. Maybe your arm is actually resting on the thigh or even your hand. Here we go, breathing in first, getting ready to move. On the exhale, we'll move, turn and fold, hands to the floor, slide, right foot back, plank pose. Just pause and plank, strong straight line, hips about shoulder level. Take a shortcut to down dog this time. A little exhale, sending hips into the sky, tiny tiptoe forward so your hips are at that mountain peak. Other side, inhale, extend left leg up, reaching back energetically. Exhale, left foot steps to the top of the mat or wiggle the toes forward to get there. Right heel to the ground, take your time. Shifting the weight back, balance, then we'll rise. Warrior one, and our transition to warrior two, heart opening to the side of the room, arms come down to parallel. Yes, do adjust the feet. Those nice outstretched arms are parallel to the floor. Then side angle, just follow the left hand forward. You'll be angled up top. That's part of the side angle pose. Reaching up, reaching down with the arms. Now this side might feel different. Maybe you can touch the floor on this side or it's this side where you need to be up a little higher. And just listen to your body and respond appropriately. Here we go, breathing in, ready to move. In the exhale, we'll turn and fold, hands to the floor, back to plank pose, which is a nice way to realign the body. Another shortcut to down dog is fine here. Bend the knees and hips into the sky. And just see and feel how the chest and head sink naturally between the arms. Let's do a little floor work. We're gonna gently kneel down, sit back briefly in hero, then sit off to the side. Swing the legs around to the front, Sit in the center of your mat. Go ahead and roll down onto your back. You're going to bring the knees in with you here. Feel free to add some movement. And also check in with your breath. Perhaps deep breaths. Adding some movement as it feels good. We're going to start with bridge pose, which is a nice opening for the front body. We'll set the feet onto the floor, knees bent. Feel free to take the feet wide or wider than your hips. 
And in doing so, you might even feel or notice your feet kind of turned outward. That's normal and it should feel okay. Breathe in, fill up your lungs. You can exhale through the mouth, feel the air leave your belly so you can engage your belly. And then we'll lift away from the floor, lifting the hips away from the floor. Now you might only lift up a little bit, which is fine. If you have a block, you can slide a block underneath you to sit on, or even your bolster, slide it underneath you to sit on for a supported bridge pose. Otherwise, just keep pressing feet into the floor, feeling the hips lift. And the higher you go, just notice what's happening in the legs. Maybe some activation. I can feel my thighs underneath my hamstrings. And if I lift a little bit higher, getting into the glutes. So even if you can, maybe try to squeeze the glute muscles. Just keep those muscles engaged. We've got an opening in the upper body. You might even get the shoulders a bit underneath you just to feel that expansion in the chest. And just take two more deep breaths. Really fill up the lungs trying to send the breath right up to the collarbones. And after that second breath, we'll make our way out of the posture. You'll start by wiggling the feet forward a little bit, extend your arms straight up into the air. That should give you space in your back body so you can roll your way down to the ground. Nice soft landing. Extend your legs out front, reach your arms behind you and actively reach in these opposite directions. Nice lengthening here. We're gonna continue with some floor work. Let's draw the right knee into chest, catch it in your hands, both hands, and just draw the knee right up towards chest. You might even notice it's limited as far as how far the leg will go. And now with the foot, point your toes, okay? You might even feel a sensation in the top of the foot in the ankle area, and now flex the foot. We're gonna keep the foot flexed. Keep it a light flex, you don't have to over, overdo it. Now, you're gonna take this right knee a little bit to the right side and then keep drawing it up towards shoulder. You might find, oh, I can actually pull it up higher because of that. Now you can keep this posture just like this or move into half happy baby pose where we ex uh, take that right foot up towards the ceiling. If you can, from the inside of the leg, take your right hand and reach up to grab hold of the sole of the foot. If you can't reach the sole of the foot, maybe just hold on to your ankle or just continue to hold on to the shin. And again, continue to feel that knee kind of point out at an angle outside the body. And just because of the weight of the hand on top of the foot there, you're going to feel some pressure. You don't really need to add any more pressure. You can, but just be aware if that's too much or overwhelming for the body, for the hips. Half happy baby pose. Take two more breaths. And then we'll just slowly release. We'll re-extend the leg out onto the floor, arms down by your side, coming to Shavasana, just for a little rebalancing of the body right there. We'll do the other side. So we'll draw the left knee in, same thing, just straight up towards chest. Notice that natural stopping point with the foot. Point the toes, feel what happens in the shin, the ankle, Lightly flex the foot just to keep it engaged. We'll take that knee out to the left side and then draw the knee up towards shoulder, just noticing maybe it can go a little further than up to, towards chest. Either stay here or we'll take the foot, the sole of the foot up towards ceiling. Hold on to the sole of the foot with the hand if you can reach it. If not, hold on to the ankle or the shin. Knee is pointing outward at an angle. Toes are doing the same thing. Now remember this style or this posturing because we're going to do something similar in a different pose, but a similar sensation. Again, just the weight of the hand on the foot may create just enough pressure that you need for the stretch in the inner legs and hips. One more breath. And then we'll release, return to Shavasana, just to realign and relax the body. So legs down beside each other, arms down by your side, and maybe a breath or two. 
getting ready to reactivate the body. When you're ready, draw both knees into chest. From here, either rock your way up to seated or roll to one side and press yourself up to seated and you'll come to boat pose, yes. So with boat, heels can be on the floor. Do energize the feet by flexing the feet perhaps, holding on to bent knees to help extend the spine. Or you might lean back a little bit more, finding that balance so the feet can float into the air like so. Knees can remain bent, shins parallel to the floor, or even play with maybe extending the legs. Flex, point with the feet there, maybe some circles. You can always come back this direction, bringing the heels back down if you need to. Okay, we're gonna move from here, breathe in. Exhale as you're able, cross legs, either hands in front to hop back into plank, or just hands to the side and just unfold the legs, swing them back, step back, plank pose. Strong straight line. Let's take a shortcut to down dog. Just bend the knees and the hips into the air. Here we go, inhale, extend right leg up. Hold there on the exhale, but just keep breathing in and out. And just feel how the body is actually getting longer. Try to reach more towards that back wall, making more space. Let's do a hip opener here. Bend your right knee, bring your heel down towards backside, and just a slight lift of the knee. You can just hold here, or if you want to, add a circle. Draw an imaginary circle in the air with your knee that's in the air. Yeah, a small circle or a big circle, however it might feel for your own hips, right? It's, if you move in one direction with the circle, be sure to draw that circle in the other direction. There you go. And then just finish at the top. You'll inhale and exhale to unwind from that twist in the spine. Step right foot back up to the top of the mat. Left heel to the floor behind you. Okay, same balancing pose there. Rising up first, warrior. Rising up into the air, there we go. Exhale, opening to warrior two. Adjusting your foundation. Maybe widening the stance just a little bit. You don't have to do that, go too far with widening that stance. Side angle, let's reach out, tip it over. Reach down, reach up. We're gonna add a new pose here. First, breathe in and exhale, follow me. We're gonna turn and fold. Bring your hands to the floor on the inside of your right foot. Then rise up onto your tiptoes behind you. This is going to align the hips. Now there's not a lot of room for your hands. We need to move this right foot out to the right side. Just heel toe that foot out to the side. And where I had mentioned we're gonna recreate that pose we were on our backs at half happy baby pose we're doing it here so your right set of toes and your knee are pointing out at an angle and way out to the side so you have a lot of space in this inner leg let's go ahead and set the left knee onto the floor if you need to pad the knee and it just might just fold your mat underneath the knee so you have some padding okay now here if your block if you happen to have a block or even your bolster just bring, maybe bring it around to the front here what we'll do, you're gonna step your hands forward a little bit, so just so your wrists and hands are out from underneath the shoulders. We're gonna inhale, push into the ground with the hands and try to move forward. Feel like you're extending the spine and trying to move forward. Inhale again, and exhale. Just feel kind of a natural, just sinking and melting of the hip if you haven't done so already. So now we're getting into that left hip flexor. If you're able, these are all option. Optionary. You can uh, step the hands forward, bend the elbows a little as you lower the upper body. Or bring the elbows all the way to the floor if they reach. Or bring in a block or this bolster to rest your forearms on. There you go. Good. Now this can be quite intense, so just be aware of your own intensity and how much you want to feel and even how long you want to be in this state of feeling. Okay? If it is pretty sensational, but you can manage it, ah, then stay here, breathe with it. If it feels overwhelming, ah, a little anxiety provoking, then start to ease out of it, that's fine. Okay? You might find that you create more space and you can, ah, kind of soften right into that space. There we go. So we are holding. It's fine that you're moving a little bit. I like to, if you move kind of in these slow, subtle ways, it's like a massage. 
maybe in those joints that are being affected by this posture. Let's take three more breaths. We're going to take our time to get out of the pose. Move slowly. So if you made your way down to the floor or even the bolster with the elbows, you're going to come back onto the hands on your mat to lift yourself up. Lift the hips and pull out of that deep lunge. Kind of lean to your left a little bit so you can slide this right foot back and come to hands and knees. And that means getting the hands a bit more underneath the shoulders. So we're just here. Just a nice realignment. Cat and cow. So inhale, tip the chin up, look forward as you create a little back bend, that arch in the back, tipping the pelvis back. Yeah, exhale, round it out. Chin to chest, belly button pulls up towards spine. It's that same core engagement. And just continue this flow. Go at your own pace. Feel the undulation of the spine. Pay attention to the movement of the, or the rocking of the pelvis here. Now finish the breath that you're on and take two more breaths. And just return to a neutral tabletop posture. Just pause. We're going to set ourselves up to down, for down dog. So you're going to step the hands forward a little bit. Again, out from underneath the shoulders. Spread out your fingers. You have a nice wide base. Tuck your toes. Do one more cat cow. So it starts with cow. That's the back bend. Look forward. Exhale, round it into cat. And then lift knees, lift the hips. This takes you to down dog. So it's cow, cat, dog. Other side, inhale, extend left leg into the air, reach and hold, keep extending. Bend the knee, heel down towards backside, a little lift of the knee, a little hip opener and twist in the spine. Stay here or draw those circles in the air with the knee, small circles or big circles. Big circles just means you just take that knee way down and way up. Okay, and then make sure you're going in both directions, just getting into the mobility of the hips there. Finish at the top, you'll breathe in, then exhale to unwind, step through, left foot to the top of the mat, back to our warrior one, right heel to the floor, rising up, and exhale, opening to warrior two, adjusting your foundation, maybe widening the stance a little bit, side angle pose, reach out, tip it over, rotate the arms, reach high and low. I think this just kind of brings a little bit more emphasis to the hip openers when we get into side angle. Okay, here comes that deep lunge. We're gonna inhale, nice. Exhale, turn, bring both hands to the floor on the inside of the left foot. Come up onto the tiptoes behind you so you're evening out the hips. Heel toe your left foot out to the side, way out to the side to make space. Gently bring the right knee to the floor. Give it some padding as it needs it. Good. You're gonna step your hands forward a little bit. <clears throat> so again, the wrists are out from underneath the shoulders. Push into the floor with the hands, straight arms, but lengthen the spine, even look forward. Another breath in, exhale. If you haven't already, let the hips kind of sink. You can stay just like this, or gradually, maybe bending elbows, just to lower the upper body, even just a little bit, because you don't have to go all the way down, especially if that doesn't feel quite right for your body today. Use the bolster or blocks. Maybe it's only one arm that reaches that bolster. It might be one hand on the floor for a little stability and one elbow on the floor or bolster. But wherever you are, yeah, breathing, intentional breath, even feel or imagine you're sending breath to these sensational parts of the body, those parts where you have the most feeling. Add those gentle massages. Yeah, you might be moving a little bit carefully. Be aware if you're overstretching or you going a little too far. Feel free to soften or back out of the pose. Good, excellent breathing. Two more breaths. Remember, we're moving in slow motion to get out of the pose because it's going to be just as stressful on the body to get out of a deep pose. So slowly return to your hands. 
Lifting the hips to get out of that hip flexor stretch. Lean to your right so you can slide this left foot back, come to hands and knees. Set the hands underneath the shoulders, ready for cat and cow. So inhale for cow, that's the back bend. Exhale, round it out into cat. And do that several times at your own pace. Again, the mobility of the spine, the mobility of the hips. Even feel free to add other movements. You know, circling the hips might feel good here. So you might go clockwise and then counterclockwise. We do that same thing to get to down dog. It'll be cow, cat, dog. So you might step the hands forward slightly. Tuck your toes. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. While you're exhaling, lift knees and hips. There's our down dog. Let's take a nice full breath in. Exhale, walk, step, or hop both feet. Return to the top of the mat. We'll be in forward fold. Inhale to extend spine. Exhale, fold again. We're going to hold this fold. As you're able, bring the hands behind the legs, just holding on. And as you're able, lean a bit forward toward your toes. You might even need to grip the mat a bit with the toes so you don't fall over. But you'll naturally feel maybe your hamstrings, even your glutes engage so you don't fall over. You know, the body just kind of automatically takes care of you in situations like this. You're leaning forward slightly hamstrings engaging, even feel like you're trying to lift your hips up towards the ceiling. That'll straighten the legs a tiny bit. Two more breaths. There you go. Then shifting weight back into the heels, bend the knees, let's free the hands, extend the spine, extend the arms out, come up all the way, standing up, reaching up into the air, even look up again if it feels okay on the neck. Exhale, look forward, arms down to your side. There we go. Good. Shake things loose as you need to. Check in with hands since we're in that plank pose. <clears throat> okay, check in with your wrists there. Alrighty. Let's add a balance. I like to do tree pose since I, it's balancing, of course, but it's also a hip opener. Okay. So mountain pose. Soften the knees. We're not locking the knee joints, so soften the knees a little bit. There you go. Shifting weight into your right foot. That's where we're standing. Inhale, get nice and tall, lengthen spine. Exhale through the mouth. Pull belly in. That's our engagement. So now we're ready for balance. Pick up left foot, flex the foot. So we have a nice dynamic leg here. Swing the knee out to the side. Okay, until it just naturally stops. It might be there. Okay, it might go further. It might not. And then placing foot on the inside of your standing leg. It can be up at the thigh doesn't have to. It can be below the knee or even farther down where you use the floor. Wherever you are, you'll inhale, extend the arms up into the air with the intention of being lifted. Light, yeah, lightness, growing tall. Good. Good. So we have our balance, ah, hip opener that's happening in the center here. This is also a meditative pose. Think, you know, because of the focus, concentration. To, you know, to be here, if we kind of lose track and think about something else, that's when we tend to lose balance. Okay, let's keep the arms extended, swing, uh, right, I don't know what knee it is, left knee, left knee forward, lifting knee, flexed foot, plant the foot into the earth, rebalance on two feet, bring the arms down to your side, shake it loose, and then even check in with that right foot. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Just want to feel like you're complete with that, that's done, we're done with that, okay? You throw it away. All right, other side, soft knees. Shifting weight into the left foot, root, connect. Inhale, tall lightness, fill up the lungs. Exhale, engage. Now we're ready. Picking up right foot, flexing the foot. We have a nice right angle here. We're gonna swing the knee out. It'll stop naturally. You don't have to force it any further. Placing foot on the inside of the standing leg. You can notice I'm using my hand to place it there. That's fine to do. You can even hold it there with your hand or free it up or send the foot down lower. Inhale, extend the arms up, feel the lengthening through the sides of the body. That's what's gonna open up through the center. So that knee might even swing out a tiny bit more. Focus is directly forward, but if you're looking at something that's not there, <laughs> something blank, you might want to lower your eyes, just your eyes, not your head, so you can see something that has texture or color. Here's our meditative moment. 
Excellent. Keep arms extended. We'll swing right knee forward, lifting knee, flexed foot. Plant the foot into the earth, rebalance. Arms down to your side. You're done, throw it away, shake it loose. There you go. Nice. All right, let's continue our flow, adding on some new poses. Inhale, reach high, both arms. We'll take chair pose. Arms can stay at an angle, or you can bring them down to parallel. Especially if you, want, if you want to go a little deeper into this chair. Breathe in. Exhale, we'll dive forward. Forward, full. Release your head and neck. Maybe you can see between your knees to the back wall. Inhale, slide hands up to the shins or knees. Extend spine. Look straight down. Exhale, fold. Hands to the floor. Hop or step back. Plank pose. Come down if you want to. Chaturanga Dandasana. Again, you decide how you feel and how you want to move to down dog, moving through the flow that feels good. That's it, whatever's natural to you, use intuition. Continuing, inhale, extend right leg up, bend and twist. That's just the bending of the knee, a little twist of the spine to open up the hip. Unwind and step through. Okay, we're going to a high lunge this time, which means your left heel will stay lifted, but you still need to shift your body weight back to find balance until the hands feel light enough where you can lift, reach forward, hinge from hips, rise up to about perpendicular. If this doesn't feel right on your low back, just go ahead and hinge forward a bit more like so, so you don't put pressure here in the low back. But we are going to straighten this leg. I just kind of lift up to help straighten this front leg. You're going to pivot or turn this whole back leg until the heel is on the floor. You'll turn sideways too, towards the windows. Arms come down to parallel. We're set for triangle. But if your feet feel like they're too far away from each other, okay, you can certainly bring the feet closer together. This is fine for, for triangle pose. That's where we're going. We're reaching out over the straight right leg. Tip it over. Reach down, reach up. So of course we're working this right hamstrings because of this tipped over action, we also get into the hips, so be aware of how all this feels to you. Good, modify as needed. Just like the side angle pose, you don't have to touch the floor. Maybe your hand is resting on your shin or knee or the inner leg. Okay, coming out of the post are by bending the right knee into a lunge, which will give you some leverage so you can come up with the upper body, pass through warrior two, reverse your warrior by reaching right hand into the air. Make sure the right knee is still bent and lunging. Now I like to support the left hip side with my left hand. What I do is I kind of put it in, push down and in. So it's constant, down, in, down, in. And that supports the pelvis, so I can really reach up and even tip it back. Okay, a big windmill out of the pose. Bring the hands down to the floor. Step back, plank pose. Use that as a way of realigning the body. Hold for a second. You're gonna pick up the right foot just an inch off the floor. You're gonna replicate tree pose. You're gonna set the right set of toes on the inner left leg. Just touch the inner left leg with the toes of the right foot. Now the knee is gonna drop. It naturally wants to drop to the floor, but actively lift the knee so it's pointing towards the side of the room. Hold here for about 15 minutes. Yes. Okay, re-extend the legs at the toes on the floor. Finish your flow. Okay, you can go right to down dog. I might even suggest going to child's pose if you need to, or just hands and knees if you just need a quick little break. Because that's a lot of ah. A lot of action that was happening in the body there. So perfectly fine to take those little pauses. Very good. Inhale, extend left leg into the air. Reach, bend and twist. A little opening there. We're going to unwind and step through. Okay, left foot to the top of the mat. High lunge on this side. Right heel stays lifted. Find your center. Yeah, take your time. Once you've found it, light hands rise up. Maybe perpendicular to the floor. With the upper body, for that tension on the back, just lean forward, so we're here. Okay, you're gonna lift, so you can extend the left leg, pivot right heel to the floor, so you'll turn sideways. Arms come down to parallel. You're prepped for triangle. Shorten this distance between the feet if you need to. When you're ready, reach out over the left leg, tip it over, left hand down, right hand up. There's our triangle pose kind of form 
several, several triangles with the body, with the straight legs, and form a, tri a triangle in between the legs, and then with the right hand in the air, that also creates one of the points of the triangle, and your feet, the other two points. Coming out of the pose, bend the left knee into a nice lunge, work your way through warrior two, reverse your warrior, reaching left hand up as need to support right hip with right hand. You're pushing down like you're trying to send the pelvis down the leg, but even pushing in, pushing forward actively. See if that provides a bit more support to stabilize the pelvis so you can be in the pose, even go deeper into the pose. Okay, here comes our big windmill out of the posture, both hands to the floor in front, step back plank pose as a way to realign the body. You're going to pick up the left foot just an inch off the floor. We're going to that fallen tree. Left set of toes touch the inner right leg. Knee lifting, pointing towards the left side of the room. Another 15 minutes. Okay. It's a yoga 15 minutes. <clears throat> okay. Which is more like five seconds, right? Extend that left leg back. Set the toes down. Again, finish the sequence as you'd like. Pause. Rest whenever you need to here as well. Wonderful. We're going to return to the floor for some more floor work, so we'll gently kneel down, sit back briefly in hero, sit off to the side, swing the legs around to the front, extend the legs out in front here, flex the feet, <clears throat> staff pose, you're sitting up tall, hands on the floor by your hips, just push into the floor to assist the extension of the torso and spine. You might even roll shoulders back, a little squeeze of the shoulder blades to engage the upper back muscles. We'll stay here for a couple breaths. This is a yoga posture, staff pose. We'll take this into a seated forward fold. So when you're ready for your hands, inhale, reach up, exhale, start to hinge forward just a little bit and stop, and then bring the hands down either to the floor or your legs. I like the floor because it's another way of really just supporting your body. You can stay here because this might be enough. Or maybe walk forward, folding forward. At any time, you can bend the knees, you can lower your chin, round your back, okay? Gently guiding your way into your forward, seated forward fold, finding your personal depth without forcing it, okay? So you might take the time, take your time to get into your pose, modify it as needed as you continue to listen to your own body. Three more breaths. Maybe audible exhales or exhales through the mouth because that might help with some of the settling into the posture as we finish it up. When you're ready, free your hands, reach forward. Inhale, hinge your way back up, reaching into the sky. So we form this capital L shape. Then exhale, arms down to your side. Just return briefly to staff pose. Just reactivate here. Okay, and then soften. Okay. All right, we're gonna keep the right leg extended. We're gonna bend the left knee and bring the foot to inner thigh. Okay, or down the leg if you need to, just in case you need less tension on that knee, right? Here, <clears throat> adjust your seat as needed. Okay. You're going to fold again. We're going to inhale, reach high with the arms. Exhale, hinge. You might pause, bring the hands down to the floor or leg, and just continue your flow. Same thing. You're certainly welcome to bend this right knee, round your back, lower your head, or lower your chin. One of my favorite, another favorite pose of mine because of the many things that are happening in the body. We get to stri uh, stretch out the hamstrings. We have a hip opener on the other side. Maybe a nice back stretch since you're rounded in the back. And 
Very good. And three more breaths here. As you're able, free your hands, reach forward, inhale, hinge your way back up, nice and tall, reaching into the sky. Exhale, arms down, hands down to the floor. You're gonna lean back, so maybe step the hands back so you can lean back. Let's lift this left knee and extend the leg, okay? <clears throat> Let's add a dynamic pose here, reversed, reverse plank pose, okay? So the hands stay behind us with the elbows bent, just kind of lean back, okay? Just kind of lean back with elbows bent. You're gonna roll the shoulders back, lift the chin, so it feels like you're lifting your chest up. Last thing, point your toes. Now, you're gonna inhale, fill up the lungs. As you exhale, press into the floor with the hands, straightening the arms to lift the hips, even if it's just a little bit. If you can, lift the hips a little higher so you form that plank pose, but it's a reverse plank. We're not here long, and we're gonna come right back down. All right, now flex the feet again. Let's do the other side. So we're gonna drag the right foot in to inner left thigh or lower as needed. Reseat if you need to. Okay, head to knee pose. Inhale, extend the arms up. Exhale, hinge a little. So bring the hands down for support on the floor or leg and continue your, your flow, your progress to your personal depth. Bend the knee, round the back, lower your chin, whatever you like to do here. Mainly focusing on breath. You might even go back to that action of uh, breathing out through the mouth as a way of uh, helping the body to almost settle a little bit more into the pose. Let's take three more breaths here. Janu Shirshasana is our Sanskrit for this pose, or head to knee pose. When you're ready, free your hands, reach forward, inhale, hinge from hips, rise up to help straighten the spine, and then bring the hands down. Again, lean back. This time, bend the left knee, bring the soles of the feet together. If you need to reset, we'll be in cobbler's pose. Let's do another back bend. Basically, I'm going to turn my hands outward or backward so the fingers are pointing behind me, okay? And just kind of lean back a little bit. But I'm basically just going to push into the floor to straighten the arms but as a way to lift the chest. You might even tip the chin up a little bit. By pushing into the floor, we're also feeling a lift of the torso a bit out of the pelvis. So you might find that the knees maybe drop open a little bit more, maybe. You can go even further if you want, just an option. Literally lift the hips off the floor and send your hips down towards your heels. Get more of a back bend, more opening, tip the head back. This is just an option. One more breath. And then we'll come back down. Okay, and then just sit comfortably. You can stay in cobbler's pose or cross your legs for easy pose or half lotus. The next posture, we're going to use the bolster. <clears throat> this is an option, but you, if you haven't done this, you may want to try it with the, with the bolster, but you can always throw it away <laughs> if you don't want to use it. But let me just show you. So I'm going to take, I should do my left leg. I'm going to do my left leg because I always do my right leg. I just want to step over, so I'm going to be here. <clears throat> I'm going to send my, some, my, it's my left foot straight ahead, but I'm going to send my foot over to the right side of the mat. Okay but leaning forward, okay, so I can get the hands or fingertips on the floor because I'm gonna send this knee to the floor. So I'm basically just over the bolster here in pigeon pose. So you have the support of this bolster, but because you're propped up, it also kind of sends you forward, okay? So you might feel more in the hip, okay? So you can play with this, so you can bring your arms here. You might wanna bring your block up here too, so you can set your forehead on your block since you're up a little higher. Or you can use your hands like so, 
Okay, so you might just do a test run to see if this works for you. If not, choose a different version of Pidgeot. Of course, that's you know one without the bolster. Okay, if this is too much, okay, lie on your back. Okay, sometimes we call this reclining pigeon. So that was our left leg that was in front. We'll cross the left leg here, and you can draw the leg in like this. Okay, so let's give that a try. So maybe give that first one a. A run here, so you might come up onto the knees. Let's get the bolsters. Everyone get a bolster. <clears throat> if not, I can grab you one. And maybe just across the center of your mat. Start with your right foot, I guess. We'll step over, then send the foot over to the left side. Get the hands out in front here, too, so you can bring this knee to the floor. If you can reach the floor, it doesn't have to reach the floor, actually. Okay? And so basically, you're just kind of sitting on the bolster between. And the knee might be on the floor, and it doesn't have to be on the floor either. It might even be on the bolster. And then carefully crawl forward, so that might bring you down to your elbows and forearms. If you have a block there, set your forehead on the block or just stack your fists to rest your forehead so you can have a little bit of release in the upper body. Yeah, do a little test run if that's just not working, it doesn't feel quite right. Choose a different style for your comfort and ease and effectiveness and benefit of the pose, yeah? There you go. Let's take three more breaths. Wonderful. I love to see how you're just kind of settled into the posture in stillness with very little movement. That's what we really want to do in poses like this as, as you're able. And if you feel like you need more time on the side, feel free to stay here. Otherwise, we're going to carefully try to get out of this pose. I don't know really of a graceful way to get out of this posture. <clears throat> so we're going to rise up. I taught this yesterday to some people and, and they just they just rolled off their mat. <laughs> that was very graceful, it was lovely. <laughs> and then the left foot <laughs> over the top, we'll send the foot over to the right edge of the mat, hands out front. So if you tried it with the right side and it didn't work, try with the left because it might feel different. And if if it's still not the right posture for you today. No worries, just find a new pose. And even if you do make it into the posture, don't feel like you have to stay here for the duration. If you, I like to think sometimes some poses like this one can have, have uh, time limits. Like you can, like, okay, I, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I can move out of the pose. I've done what I needed to do here. play with the action of exhaling through your mouth with a sigh and feeling the body settle more into the pose. It might even bring more sensation. Again, if you can endure that with more breath, then stay in that moment. Take about three more breaths. You certainly can stay here longer if you need more time here or would like more time here or even moving the block or the bolster out of the way and staying in pigeon. But we're just going to start moving into just a couple final postures. So whenever you're ready to move, again, no rush, just rising up and finding your graceful way out of the pose. You can roll away. <laughs> okay. 
We'll start by lying down. Have your bolster nearby, okay, just right by your side, but lie on your back. Draw both knees into chest. We'll start with a twist. So draw the knees in. We'll take the knees over to the left side. Extend your right arm out to the right side. Yeah, use props if you need to, or just kind of play with the different sensations in the legs and hips. Yeah, I already see some. You can cross one leg over the other, like eagles, eagle pose. You can stagger the legs, kind of that windshield wiper twist. If you need support, you might even place a block or a bolster underneath that bottom leg or even between the knees. Again, just finding the pose that feels right for your body at this moment. Again, no rush to move. Maybe a couple more breaths, longer if you need more time on this side. And when you do feel complete on this first side, carefully and slowly come back up to center. Hold center for a few seconds so you feel that realignment in your spine. And then take the twist to the other side. Same thing if you need, oh, if you need support on this side. Okay, a block or the bolster or blanket for a little support between the knees or underneath that bottom leg. Or foot, yeah, good. Two more breaths, or more breaths if you need more time on the second side. When you feel complete, return to center. You might just set your feet onto the floor, knees bent. Now this could be your ending pose, just like that. Knees bent, feet flat on the floor. Or Shavasana, extend the legs out front. Okay. Or roll back onto one side. Or bring in your bolster okay, behind you as a way to make kind of almost like a fish pose where you're in a lying down back bend. You've got the bolster up and down the mat here sitting in front of it and then lying down creates this back bend sensation that might feel more supported for you. Or use the bolster to place underneath bent knees. We have some good choices here, listening to your body, and moving into the restorative pose that suits you at this moment. Return to the awareness of your breath. Take five deep breaths, slow deep breaths. Just mindful breathing in and out, just as you did at the beginning of your practice. It helps you to be here in the moment, more present. It guides you through your practice, or moving practice, focusing on hips and hamstrings. And throughout that process, hopefully, finding space within you, opening up, releasing any obstacles, any walls that have felt built up within you, whether it's physically, 
or even mentally or spiritually. And after your fifth breath, just moving as slowly as you can, just roll to one side. If you're on the bolster, just kind of slide off to the side. And then from there, press yourself up to a seated position. Moving slowly, take your time. And once you're here, just one last movement together. We'll inhale, extend the arms out and up. And as you exhale, bring your palms together and down to your heart. Taking one more full and complete breath on your own. Breathing into heart space. And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying, Namaste. Namaste. You're welcome. Mm. Thank you so much for watching and participating in this yoga lesson. To help us with the channel so we can continue to bring you more content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. Namaste.